Hello students, I am Azizi, Professor of Electronics. Now we are starting our new course that is assembly language learning. That how to write your assembly language programs using a hardware platform. We will use MCS51 family as a hardware platform for our assembly language learning. And we will use a device that is 8089C51 microcontroller and microprocessor in our course. We will use two softwares that is uh, Proteus software to simulate our hardware. Second is the Keel compiler to write our assembly language programs. We will adopt an approach of practical development of our concepts regarding assembly language programming. We will not go into the unnecessary details of theoretical background of the subject, but we will learn different theoretical concepts by practical approach and we will see that what are the different terminologies associated with the uh, embedded system design using uh, microcontrollers and microprocessor and how to write your programs in assembly language using Keel compiler. So we'll use two softwares as I have mentioned earlier that is the Proteus and Keel compiler. And we'll refer a book that is 8051 microcontroller by Scott McKenzie throughout our course. We'll start our course by development of a program that is a counter program and then we will learn during practical development that what are the different things that we are using to develop our program that what are the comments and why we are using different registers and what are the different opcodes or mnemonics of the microcontrollers. So let's start our first session. Here you can find two software that is Proteus and uh, Microvision Keel. Proteus is to simulate our microcontroller and microprocessor projects while Microvision Keel will be used to write our programs in assembly language. So let's start our first program and we'll learn that how we are writing this program and what are the different concepts of writing our program in assembly language. First of all, we'll start a new project by pressing new project icon. Here we have new project icon. So we'll press this icon and here we'll give the name to our project 89C51 first project and we will also select the folder to save our program. We will go for browse and documents. Here we have the folder that is Electro Educators and here we will go for the course contents and here we will create a new folder and we will give the name that is MCS51 projects. Select the folder and next create a schematic from the selected template that is default. We will select the default template. We can change the size of our template as and when required during our project development. So we will select the default, press next. Do not create a PCB layout, OK next. No firmware project, OK next and finish. And here we'll place a microcontroller that is 89C51 microcontroller. We'll go to the components and we'll go to the parts. And here we will write 8089C51. And here we have the microcontroller that is 8089C51. 8051 microcontroller, 4 kilobyte code, 33 megahertz maximum clock speed, 2 into 16 bit timers and a UART that is universal asynchronous receiver transmitter. We will select this microcontroller, OK. Select OK. Now we will add this device in our project. Here we have the device that is 89C51. Here we can see different control pins and ports are here. Pin number 18 and 19 pins are required to connect the crystal oscillator. Although it is not required to connect a crystal oscillator in simulation mode, but we'll connect an oscillator just to learn that how to connect oscillator with this microcontroller. Here we can find another pin that is pin number 9, reset. Here we can see there is no bar on RST label. So it means that this RST or reset pin is active high. And here we can find three pins that is pin number 29, pin number 30 and pin number 31. 
Pin number 29 is program stored enable and it is active low. ALE, address latch enable, it is active high. External access, it is active low. We will see in our next lectures that how to use these pins to develop microprocessor based systems. And here we have a complete port that is from port 1.0 to port 1.7. It is a general purpose port of this microcontroller. But here we have three ports that is port 0, port 2 and port 3. All these pins can work as port as well as they have alternate functions with them. Here we can see that port 0.0, .0 and AD0, it means that this pin can be used as port 0, .0 .0 and address and data 0. Similarly, the other pins that is port 0 0.1, port 0 0.2 to port 0 0.7, this port can be act as a port 0 and can also act as address and data port in our microprocessor based projects. And similarly, we have another port that is port 2. This port 2 can be act as port. We can connect different devices with this port, but this port has alternate function that is it can generate address 8 to address 15 if we'll use this microcontroller in microprocessor mode. Similarly, port 3 can be used as a simple port, but this port has also alternate functions that is RxD, TxD as a UR to transmit and receive the data, interrupt 0, interrupt 1 for external interrupts, and timer 0, timer 1 to receive the pulses from the external world. Similarly, we have read and write pins on port 3.6 and 3.7 and these pins will be used as read and write operations in case of uh, microprocessor based design. So first we will use this device as a microcontroller and we will write a program to run a counter on port 1 that is from port 1.0 to port 1.7. What are the basic requirements to run a program on this device? We will connect the external access pin to 5 volt because if we will connect this pin to the ground. So, this microcontroller will serve as microprocessor and we will have address and data on port 0 and we will have address from A8 to A15 on port 2. So, first we will connect the reset pin to the ground because it is active high. So, we will connect this pin to the ground. We will go to the terminal mode and we will select the ground. Okay and we will connect this pin that is pin number 9 to the ground and we will connect the pin number 31 that is external access with 5 volt. So, we will select the power and we will write added properties plus 5 volt. How to connect the crystal oscillator with this microcontroller? We will go to the components, parts and we will write crystal. Here we have crystal oscillator device. We will select this device. Now we will go for the capacitors. And we will select non-polarized capacitors. We have to connect 22 picofarad capacitors with crystal oscillator as mentioned in the data book. Here in nickel barrier category, we have 22 picofarad capacitor. Here we can find 22 picofarad capacitor and we will select this capacitor. Okay. And now we will connect the crystal with pin number 18 and 19 like this. We will connect one end of the crystal with pin number 19 and the second end with pin number 18. Now, we will connect two capacitors that is 22 picofarad capacitors. One with pin number 19 and second with pin number 18 and the second end of the capacitor will be connected to the ground. Right. Now, we will write the value of the crystal 
and here we will write 12 megahertz. It is not required to connect the crystal oscillator in simulation of this microcontroller. So, we will select this crystal oscillator and here we will click exclude from simulation. Okay. We will also select the capacitors exclude from simulation. Now, how to select the crystal oscillator for this microcontroller? We will go for the properties, edit properties and here we can see the clock frequency is 12 megahertz. We can change this frequency, but we will leave it as it is that is 12 megahertz. Okay. Here we have developed our first circuit for our microcontroller. Now we will save the project. Okay, save. And now we will write a program in assembly language to run a counter on port 1. So, how we will see the counter running on port 1? Although there is no need to connect anything to see the output at this port, this port will itself show the high and low level from port 1.0 to port 1.7. But here we will connect a logic probe and we will go for the parts. Here we will write logic probe. Here we can find logic probe, large version and logic probe, logic state indicator. We will select logic state indicator and here we can see the logic state indicator. Select OK. Now we will connect the logic probe at all pins of port 1. Now we will copy this port and we will connect all the logic probes with port 1. Now our device is ready to write our first program. So, let us start our first program to run a counter on port 1. We will save the project. Thanks for watching the assembly language programming course. We hope that you find this course very helpful to learn assembly language programming. If you feel that this course contributes and enhances your embedded system design knowledge, then go ahead and hit like, share and subscribe buttons and do not forget to press bell icon to stay updated with every new upcoming video from Electro Educators as soon as it goes up. Electro Educators also offers technical consultancy in following fields. For assistance regarding technical problems, projects and any consultancy, feel free to reach out at our email address electroeducators at gmail.com. Okay, see you in next lecture.